Today I'm working on Excel Module 1, End of Module Project 1, the Ferrante and Dale Consultants. I already have my instructions downloaded, and here you see the starter pile on your screen. The first thing you'll need to do is enable editing, if that is popped up on your computer. And then make sure in um, B6, B6 that it has your name listed. If you don't see your name listed here in B6, go back into Blackboard and Cengage and we download the document because your name should show here in the file section. Now we're going to save our file with the new name. So I'm going to go to File, do the Save As, and here um, I'm going to go ahead and click Browse because I want to find the location where I'm going to save my document at. I'm going to put it on my desk load, desktop, new folder, and I'm going to say Excel Fall 2020 or whatever semester you're working on. I'm going to say Open. Now I'm going to change that one to a two. and click save. So my file name matches the file name in your instructions. So we're going to read through our instructions. Uh, we're an associate consultant for Ferrante and Dahl and they want us to work on their worksheet. So we're going to go to the current accounts worksheet right here and we're going to cut the worksheet subtitle from cell E2 and paste it in cell A2. So I'm going to go to E2 where it says current accounts and I'm going to cut it. I'm just going to use my keyboard shortcut control C. Now it puts that active marching line around there. Then I'm going to paste it in A2. A2, control D to paste. So control X cuts, control A pastes, or you can use the cut and paste options up here on the home tab. Step two, we're going to copy Jordan's name in J12 and paste it in J11 or J2. I'm going to go to J2 and I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to hit control C for copy and I'm going to paste it in J11. So control V copies. Then we want to clear the contents of J2. Now if we would have used the cut, it would have cleared it automatically. But since we used the paste, we now have to clear it. So up here on our home tab, we've got our clear button and we can say clear all. And now that cell is empty. In C3, we're going to enter company as the column heading. So just type in company and then hit enter to actually put that information in that cell. We're going to change the font size of the range A3, J3 to 12 points. So first we have to select the range. There's a couple of different ways. The easiest way is just to click in A3. Then when your mouse looks like that fat plus sign, we're going to left click and then drag down to J3. And so we have that whole range selected. We're going to change it to 12 point. 12 point. And then we're going to bold contents. And then we're going to use auto fit to resize J and G. So I'm going to click over here, click off the range. I'm going to go over here to the bar between G and H. And when my cursor looks like the solid line with the horizontal arrow, I'm going to double click 
and that automatically resizes that. And I'm going to do the same thing to J column. So I'm going to go over here between J and K and double click, and it's going to resize that and do an auto fit. Back looking at my instructions again, I'm ready for number five. I'm going to apply the text number format to the range A4 through A9. So again, I need to click in A4, but this time I'm going to go down to A9. And I want to make that the text number format. So up here in um, Excel on the Home tab, I'm going to click on this little arrow right here. And I'm just going to come down here. These are all these different formats that are available to you in Excel. And I'm going to click on text. And what that does, you can see when you have text, your information in the cell aligns with the left side. If it's a number, it aligns with the right side. Now in cell E5, so we're going to go to E5. Um, we want to make sure it says networking conference, so I need to finish entering some information in this cell. And you can see it automatically fills for me as soon as I hit that E, and that's because we've entered networking conference in this column already. So all you need to do now is hit enter. Okay. Nice little shortcut for us. Now Ferrante and Dahl has a company policy to contract their clients every two weeks. So in H4, we want to create a formula without a function that adds 14 days to the date the client was last contacted in cell G4. So what we can do is we can say equals, because we're telling Excel we're entering a formula when we put in the equal sign. We're going to click in G4, then we're going to use our plus sign and 14, and we're going to hit enter, and it automatically adds 14 days to the date in G4. So you don't have to get out the calendar and count each day. It will do it for you. Again, if I click on H4, I can look up here in my formula bar, and you can see the formula that we used, G4 plus 14. Now we're going to copy this formula down to H9. So with this H4 active, I'm going to move my cursor to the fill handle. So I'm going to make my cursor look like that little skinny plus sign. Now I'm going to click with my left mouse key and drag down. And it's copying the formula. This little box right here is your autofill option. So you can click on this just to look at it. And you can see you can copy the cells. You can copy the formatting only. You can copy without formatting. So you've got some different options to choose from. Right, we're ready for number nine and J6. So first thing to do, we're going to go to J6. We can see it's empty. We need to enter a number. We're going to enter 3, 4, 6, 7, 5 as the correct amount. Because it's already formatted, it's going to go ahead and make it into the accounting number format for us, like the rest of the information in that column. In J10, we want to use a formula that uses a sum function to add these amounts, J4 through J9, automatically. So up here on the Home tab, we've got this Auto Sum. You can click on that, and you can choose Sum. It's going to automatically say, with a running line, that these are the cells that it's going to add. Now, when you use this in Excel, you always want to pay attention to what range is surrounded by that running line. It might not be the correct range that you're looking for. In this case, it is correct, so now we can just hit the Enter key, and it's going to add it up for us. Now we're going to change the orientation of the worksheet to Landscape. So I'm going to come up here to Page Layout. 
orientation, landscape. And we're going to change the print scaling so we fit the sheet just on one page. So I'm going to click on this little page setup button right here. And I'm going to use the scaling. I want to fit it to one page. Click OK. And now we're done. You can check your worksheet against the worksheet in the instructions. Now you're ready to save it. So I come up here and hit the save icon. I'm going to close it. And now if I hit continue, I can upload it. So what I want to do is I'm going to click, click on the upload button. I'm going to find where I saved that document. Make sure you have it closed. Sometimes that makes a difference. On my desktop, I'm going to find the Excel Fall 2020. Find that assignment, open, and submit. And now I can view my report. And you can see we got 100 out of 100. If it says 0 out of 100, you need to do two things. First, check and make sure you submitted the correct file for grading. Second, if, like here it says enter company as a column heading, if you've misspelled this, it's going to affect everything else down. So make sure you have your information spelled correctly as well. We've got 100 out of 100, so we're ready to go to the next assignment.